Hello, my friends. This is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. I thought I would share with you a little kind of building your stash tip that um, I like to use and it certainly makes my crafty life a lot easier. I don't get a lot of time in my craft room. I really don't. Just because of circumstance, I don't get a lot of time. So when I do get some time to sit down and do some projects, I don't want to use up a lot of that precious time stamping and coloring images, especially for me because I know coloring images is something that I don't excel at. It takes time. Um, I'm very slow at it. I'm very deliberate. So I definitely don't want to wait until I'm sitting down and making a project to stamp and color images because that'll take up a lot of my time. So what I, I, what I like to do is every so often I'll sit down, I'll stamp out a bunch of images and I'll keep them by my bedside. Sometimes I even pack some of them and bring them with me when I know I'm going to be spending a lot of time waiting in the courtroom or whatever the case may be. And anytime I find some quiet time, it's usually right before bed, I color up my images. Once all of my images are colored up, I will make high quality copies of my completed colored images and then either fussy cut them, which I rarely do, or use my scanning cut, which nine times out of ten I do. And then I end up with a massive stash of already pre-made color images that I can pull out whenever I want and make quick projects. So here's an example of me building my stash of house mouse um, characters. I use these three particular house mouse stamp sets. I use So Sweet, which is this one, Painted Wishes, which is that one. Here is Mice Wishes. So I stamped out all three of these stamp sets and I stamped out multiples of each image so that I can color them up in different ways. I didn't make them all the same color or the same style because I want a nice selection of variety that I can use for different projects. Not knowing what colors I'm going to be using down the road, I tried or I tried to use colors and you know, do different variations of colors and combinations of colors with the images. For example, I mean, here's the same image colored two different ways. One is a pink cupcake, one is a blue cupcake. So if I wanted to make a little a birthday project for a female or a little more feminine, here's one if I wanted to make one for a boy. Um, or just, you know, maybe a little girl who likes blue as opposed to pink. The point is different colors, um, variety of colors for the same image. Here's the little mouse with the balloon. I have four different versions of this same little mouse. Let's find him. Four little different versions of this same mouse. Here he is. Um, each of these mice I stamped four times and colored four different types of, um, here's a brown one brown mouse, blue balloon. Here's a black mouse with a purple balloon. Here's a gray mouse with a red balloon. And here's a red mouse with a yellow balloon. So each of these images is just colored differently. So I have a nice selection. Here we have a um, pink and a yellow flower, same image. Okay, so what I do, here's the little paintbrush mouse. And this little guy I also made in black, brown, gray, and red. So we have 
four different versions of the same mouse. Okay, you see that he's holding a paintbrush. He also has a little jar for his paint. I didn't color that in because the way I envision using this particular mouse is that he would be coloring or painting some kind of banner or sentiment onto a card. So depending on the ink that I use to stamp out that sentiment, I would color this jar that same color. But this I can color in, you know, a minute or two as opposed to the time it takes me to color something like this. These I stamped out and colored over the course of literally a week. It took me almost a week to color each of these guys, right? And before I cut them all out, and these are the originals. The, the way I know these are the originals is because you can see the ink on the other side. When you use Copics, you sh the ink should bleed on the other side. So these are my originals. So what I did, once all of these originals were colored on their stamp sheet, right? On the one page before, before I, f I cut them out, I made some high quality copies. So these are some of my high quality copies. High quality copies, you see, of the same image high quality copies of my original Copic colored images. So now anytime I want to use a house mouse character in a project, I have these sheets, right? And the way I store them is I put them in these little ticket folders and I put the name of what they are. In this case, these are house mouse designs. I keep these high quality copy sheets in these ticket folders that I file away and the way they sit in my file system I would be able to see um, they would sit like this so I would see the little tag at the end of the little flap and if I want more house mouse I pull out one of these color sheets and I run it through my scan and shut scanning cut and I get more of these high quality um, cuts. Now, I share this with you not because this is my unique and brilliant idea. It's not. I'm sure a lot of people do this. But even I'm guilty of sometimes forgetting to do something like this. Um, and you'd be amazed how much easier this makes your, your, your creative time um, flow. A lot of times I spend, uh, I spend so much time coloring an image and I get so laser focus. I get this tunnel vision that I get so excited when I'm done coloring it that I cut it out and I use it without having made a copy of it. So then if I want to use that same image again, I have to stamp it and color it again. And like I said, super slow colorer, super slow crafter that I am. It just it uh, boggles the brain that I would forget to make copies, but sometimes I do. So even I have to be reminded to slow down when you've colored something and it turns out beautifully. If you have a copy machine or go to Staples or go wherever, um, make a couple of high quality copies, keep it in your stash, then you can go back and reuse it. That way you spend more of your time fighting, finding a creative use, different creative use for your project as opposed to having to recolor the entire image again. So that is my share, my friends. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly do appreciate